Most modern scholarly approaches to religion are based, in my opinion, on the false and mentally crippling idea that the only kind of knowledge we humans can have is limited to the empirical order. We have to see, hear, taste, touch, or smell something to know it. And obviously, if that's the case, we can know nothing at all about God or the spiritual world or human immortality. Modern scholars, therefore, who have this empirical bias are essentially limited to doing one of three things. And I often think in terms of these scholars as falling into three basic categories. We could call them primitivists or reductionists on the one hand, functionalists, a second group, and what I call fideists, a third group. The first simply look at religion as nonsense and spend their times debunking it cynically, skeptically, as something that's a kind of residue from man's pre-scientific past. The second group of scholars, again with these empirical biases, the functionalists I called them, would say, no, religion has certain positive value, but that value is still strictly historical, horizontal, and social. Religions promote virtue, honesty, justice, and so forth. And then a third group, scholars I've called fideists, would be themselves personally believers in God, but they would feel as though they have to shield that belief from their students, still like the other scholars speaking only about historical matters, the transmission of sacred texts over time, archeological evidence from ancient sites and so forth. In striking contrast to all of those groups, perennialist scholarship, begins with the conviction, as Frithjof Schuwan would put it, that man is made for the absolute. In other words, that we have a capacity to know God directly, to know absolutely the spiritual world. The world's religions for the perennialist are like condensations or crystallizations of that supreme truth, that wisdom. And they are at the same time, if you will, training programs or methods whereby we can come to acquire that knowledge and understand God directly. Put the point differently, the perennialist teaches about religion. He writes about religion with the idea, with the conviction that his teaching and writing can have a transformative impact on his students, changing not simply how they look at the world, but the world that they look at, changing the kind of people they are. I think in this regard of something that the great metaphysician and art historian Ananda Kumaraswamy once said. He was asked about his own scholarship and he said that he did what he did in the first place for his own soul's salvation and secondly for those who might benefit from his results. And this seems to me characteristic of all perennialist scholarship.